Salut tout le monde! It's Christine L here. And what do we got? Ooh, kids, we got a finished diamond painting. I'm gonna zoom out here in a second to show you, but whew, she's done, y'all. She is done. We're gonna go through the drills to what my um, impression is of them, as well as the stuff that came with what I have left over and just my experience in general. So let's zoom out and get a look at this Popeye. Yes, girl. So, super, super bright. Like this did not disappoint in terms of color and vividness once you were done. Like it's super clear even in the image itself that you're not seeing fuzzy edges because everything was just perfectly outlined and worked out. So it's amazing. In that respect, I have zero problems. I think this was absolutely beautiful to work on. It adhered well, um, you know, to the canvas. There was a perfect amount of stickiness. This was a lot of fun. I admit, though, I liked it so much that I almost breezed through it. There was a moment where I was like, you know what? You need to stop and enjoy this a bit more. It felt like I was flying through it. So... The best parts for me were probably in here as well as in here because these are the most confetti. They're the most color heavy. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed that the most. I enjoyed flipping back between all these colors. Uh, I enjoyed like the little bits and pieces in here. So what, basically as I was working it, I would just do the, um, the black outline and then go in and fill everything. Now, did I make any changes? So yes, they're very, very minor, but I did make some changes. For instance, in the, I believe it was this hair thread up here, there was a random yellow or the black line did not connect properly. So I changed that just to personal preference. There was also a very different blue, like in the middle of one of the leaves here. So I took that out and replaced it with a purple. It's just, again, it just flowed better for me. The other thing I did, and we'll just go back in a little bit, was her nails. So originally this was yellow, yellow, glow in the dark, yellow. I, I mean, if we're gonna go glow in the dark, if you're gonna put specialty drills, let's put some specialty drills. So these three were yellow, I changed them to glow in the dark. And that's it, those are the only changes I made. I didn't, there was nothing else that bugged me. There was nothing else that made me feel like it needed to be adjusted. It was literally these tiny little places that as I was looking at after, I went, oh, that red one really bugs me. Or, oh, I really want that black line to connect. So it was just, I did those minor changes. And I definitely waited till I had a bigger chunk of the section done. Um because if you look in this instance here, I might have been inclined to change the yellows, but I waited till I had a greater portion done. And then I realized that, okay, those are supposed to be different. They're sparkles, they're highlights. So if I had started changing the, these before I realized that, I would have actually ruined a pretty awesome part of the diamond painting. So I waited till I had a good portion of the section done, made sure that that drill was really not in the right place for me or my taste, um, and then I changed it. And again, the nails was like, I mean, if you're gonna put glow in the dark, why did you just put it on one? Why make these yellow? So I just went ahead and said, let's use those special drills, right? So let's take a look um, at those drills. Did I have any left over? All right, so talking drills. Um, as you can see, I didn't run out of anything, and in fact, I have a whole other bag of 310s. I might potentially have had another full bag of 310s, but there was a defect in one of my bags. Um, I actually showed that in a quality video that I did, and I'll, I'll link it up um, for anyone who wants to take a look at that. So I had to kind of go through, and I got a little pickier at the end about the black. So for the most part, you can see, I don't, you know, there's not a lot left over, or rather there is a lot left over. So at no point in time did I worry about running out. Um, there was actually maybe one color that kind of made me hesitate for a bit. Uh, but then as I got closer to the end of the painting, I, I realized, okay, no, 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 we're, 
we're doing good. I've, I've got plenty. Um, the only other thing I found is the most problematic drills aren't even here. Looks like I missed a batch. So the most problematic drills for me were again the blacks where I had the major mistake, but also the, the glow in the dark. They seem to have the most defects in them, so I tended to be picking a lot out of that one. But it's not like major, major. It, again, I was never at any point in time scared that I would run out. And of course you can see I do occasionally mix colors. And that happens. My trick to that is to basically just work it that way. So when I come to this color, I work this color and the extra one that's in there so I don't actually take the time to separate until I'm de-kitting. So yeah, so no problems on the drills, no issues with that, except the ones that I've pointed out. Again, there were some issues with the black, but otherwise, like I said, I was not picking out. This is actually, this bucket here is actually the trash. Um, and I did show that in my quality video as well that I linked earlier. So it's, it's not much. I mean, given the size of this painting, we're talking over 50 by 70 centimeters. That's actually pretty good. And again, I have so many leftovers. It's, it's awesome. So let's talk tools. Now, this is the bin that you get, and this is not the container you get. That's something I'm used. I'm using, excuse me. So as you can see, I squashed a bunch of them into this silver container and I just close it up when I'm not using. The other thing you'll notice is it doesn't have very many holes in it because I didn't use it for the whole thing. I actually found this lighter pink wax from a Diamond Club to not be as strong as some of the, um, the little square pink ones that you get from, say, Amazon or AliExpress or just other companies in general. So that was a bit disappointing, but I have so many of those squares from other, um, you know, kits that I was able to use that. But it was just a little surprising that, and, and I've heard people saying that about this. Apparently they used to use a darker one, um, a slightly darker pink, and that one was better. But for whatever reason, they've switched. And um, Personally, I just didn't care for it. The pen. The pen is fine. It's your standard diamond painting pen. Uh, single placer is good. That's essentially all I ever use. I had used the multi-placer on a different crappy painting that I also showed in my quality video because I wanted to get that done. However, and I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, is this is really jagged and crooked. So we're going to get a little up close. Ooh, pardon the hair. But you can see that the end of the pen is not smooth. That plastic has jagged edges. And then if I do this, you can see it's almost angled. So the edges aren't level. They're not the same height. So this was not fun. Again, if we're going to pay for a huge kit and you're going to insist on giving us this stuff um, with it each and every time, it's totally okay to put a bit more quality into these as well. I've seen some that are opaque. They're white, not transparent. And apparently those are better quality. But this I wasn't impressed with. So in general, it's a good thing I don't use a multi-placer because I would have been really disappointed. There's just one more thing too that I remember about the canvas that I wanted to mention. And we could kind of see it up here is that there's a lot of gapping. Now, I don't spend a lot of time straightening. That's not what I want to be doing for my hobby. It's the placement, it's the color, it's the final image. But what I did notice about Diamond Art Club is their canvas or the, these spots for each drill appear to be rather large. I'm going to see if we can go in a bit more. Yes. So it's almost like the spot is bigger than the drill itself. So you can actually slide it and move it around. So I feel like that means that the spaces in between the drills are a bit too big. You could probably have cut a fraction off and then these would have sit snug much better together and you wouldn't have these weird, like see to me like this just looks right here. It's all out of whack. So I noticed that there were some places where that's happening and you can see I can kind of push them around and wiggle it, but 
shouldn't really have to do that. I kind of want to just be able to place them. And I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but... In some instances, if you don't place it properly, the black circle underneath the symbol shows up. So there were times where I found myself once again, like jiggling it and wiggling it to try and get it to, to cover that black line completely. So we might, I think personally, if you're going to insist on putting the, the little circle guides, um, that you actually maybe make the line just a little bit lighter. But like I said, some, some spots feel like they're almost gapping um, and they're moving. So the idea that I can shift them all once placed, not ideal. I'd rather that they be snug. Uh, but that, again, is a personal preference. For beginners, that's probably a really good idea. It makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to work. I didn't have to fiddle with anything. So that's, again, that is a matter of personal preference. I want them to be tighter, but it was a lot easier to work this way. So overall generally very happy there's nothing in here that was a huge issue that was a um you know that ruined my hobby or anything as far as i'm concerned this was a good mix and i really enjoyed working on this um and definitely look forward to working on more diamond art club thanks for watching à la prochaine